There's just a video on a um, source for uh, replacement capacitors for ferro-resonant transformers, which are a um, not screamingly efficient. I mean, this guy, which is a 100, 120 volt amperes uh, capacity one, um, with no load, this guy uses 30 watts and 40 volt amperes, but that's just because ferro-resonant transformers rely on partial core saturation, so, you know, fairly, fairly, fairly lossy. But they make up for it, for it by being a very reliable means of um, generating um, or serving as means of regulating AC supply potentials and also if you can live with the somewhat distorted output of them because it might actually do a bit of a demo video on it in, as an addendum to this because one of the things I got for Christmas are some 100x scope probes. But, so yeah, um, anyways, this particular one is, um, made in, I think, 1967, most likely, the original capacitor, which was a couple capacitors ago, you can still see it has the, uh, kind of the equivalent of a warranty seal, the solder blob, which was soldering the original capacitor to this, um, mounting bracket, was, uh, week 45 of 1966, if I recall, if I recall correctly, it was... Yeah, I think most likely that, and it had uh, failed short. Most likely just because probably a combination of age and not having been used in a long time, and then all of a sudden I use it, and when these things are running, there's a couple hundred volts across the cap. I think this particular one, without a capacitor, I measured about 370 volts AC across these terminals. Obviously, this is not plugged in while I'm doing this. See, right there, that's plugged. That cord's a bit dinged up, should probably replace it with something a bit more robust considering what I use this for. But uh, anyways, these require 660 volt caps, and that's the thing with all my ferroism transformers. Like there's this one, which is a um, 30 volt ampere one that I required, oh, I think November, this was kind of my Black Friday. I think I got it actually Saturday after Thanksgiving, come to think of it. Um, you know, Christmas presents, but... Uh, this one is a 1 microfarad 660 volt cap, and there's this one which I actually need to get a cap for, but that one uses a 1.75 microfarad 660 volt cap. Um, these are all uh, solar electric. Well, this one's a um, solar unit of general signal, and this one being you know very old, um, almost half a century old actually, division of BPC company. Or basic Products Corporation. Blah blah blah, Soul Electric, blah blah blah, Elk Grove, Illinois. Blah blah blah. And obviously this one they very recently started using. Oh, no wait, that's, I don't, wait, never mind that, that's not a, um, a zip code, because that one's 6,000, also 2,200, that's more east in the country. And then there's this one. Don't know when this is. I'm guessing that that's a date code, but the problem is that that's this bit where it's the one blemish bit on the paint job, and it's naturally where the um, um, thing is. But you see some water ingress under the finish and paint bubbling and whatnot. But I'm guessing this is probably from the 1960s and the 1980s. Certainly looks it. And um, there's both these, say, uh, 118 volts output, whereas this one being more recent, I think this is probably 1990s or later. Um, or I'm guessing probably very late 1980s or 1990s. Um, this one is um, 120 volts. And there was a bit, because I know I've got some early 1950s uh, fluorescent choke ballasts for, um, I think, uh, F20 T12 lamps. Those are, say, 118 volts. And um, remember, I think also the cash register at a convenience store that I used to stop by when I was uh, doing some jobs when I was 8 or 9. That which was a 1980s cash register, I think that had 117 volts, so yeah, there's all kinds of weirdities, and then of course lots of people refer to uh, our mains as 110 volts, which it hasn't been in close to 100 years now. Um, but yeah, um, linguistic inertia, but uh, anyways. Um, anyways, getting back to where I was originally speaking about, what I was originally doing after the original capacitor died is I actually found uh, three microfarad 
um, 660 volt cap from 1974 unused in my collection of stuff but that because I didn't reform it because this was many years ago um, that one died after a couple of months so I've been using these for a while because I don't use it that much so I figured I'd try and get away with um, using these 440 volt caps because, you know, I think this was like less than three bucks from uh, Granger at the time I got it. So I actually got a Granger thing. Oh, because they ordered so many of these, I just have a Granger part number on the label. Because they sold this by the tens of thousands. But, anyways, so it probably doesn't add much to their um, per unit cost to have a custom label. But, anyways, I um, figured I'd try and find a um, 660 volt cap because. Granger doesn't have these McMaster car. I checked, you know, local appliance repair, appliance repair places and HVAC supply houses, and they don't have this. Or they don't have these 660 volt caps. And I actually had to get this from Digikeen. It was I think about seven bucks, but you know, Cornell Dublier. I mean, made I mean, made in Mexico, but you know, reasonably decent quality. You know, like you know, Chinese crap like that. But uh, anyways. Um, I actually don't know what that is, if that was original or... I don't know how maybe kindly this cap's been taken to being run on... I don't know. I actually don't know what the potential across these terminals is because I've never actually measured it. I should do that actually. Um, there's now that I have some 100x scope probes from uh, another Christmas present, but um... Uh, anyways, I have a lot. Um, but anyways, I know that it was about 370 volts open circuit when I uh, tested this uh, after after a couple of the, I think it was, I don't know if it was after the original or that um, other capacitor died, but it's about 370 volts across those. But given that it's a tank circuit operating at resonance, it's probably higher than that. Um, but anyways, so yeah, it's just a bit of a rambling video on um, furs and transformers and the uh, oh. Very old school way of AC regulation, but still a fairly reliable way of doing it because um, um, this guy is, um, you know, 46 years old and it still works. It's twice as old as I am. And, uh, yeah, we're probably going to get a proper grommet and stuff. And what I'll probably do is just plug the hole in the bottom because I just used the original hole where the original cord came through and it's a real bit of a pain trying to get at the wiring blocks inside there but I'm probably gonna you know recommendations for future work as are many things but uh, yeah um all right so yeah some and I think nowadays even equivalent models to this are you know two to three hundred bucks in that range I think a little over a quarter grand from uh, I think both uh, digit or no McMaster car and um, uh, Granger and of course they don't sell the replacement caps, but they're obviously still made. So if one of the reasons that I was posting this, which I'm getting to, you know, eight minutes into the video and change, is that if you need these, try DigiKey. Although, be forewarned, their website is really designed for people who really get electronics and really know what they're looking for, and there's a fairly substantial learning curve associated with it, but, you know, just look there, film caps, 660 volts AC... And um, we had a film caps, three microfarad, 660 volts. I seen should be fairly self-evident once you have some idea of what you're looking for. But you know, forewarned is forearmed, I guess. And um, by the way, that being dished in, that's um, normal on these caps, or on, on certain f caps of this type, because I've got a, a whole bunch of a uh, four microfarad, 370 volt ones for power factor correction purposes, and. They all look like that as well, but just having the like, sides uh, cheesed in like that. I think cheesed in is the term for it, I don't know. So yeah, and probably this guy is going to be reserved for, you know, much more um, gentle experiments from now on. But, yeah, yes, I did get these for, I think actually a bit less than 15 bucks a piece, because, you know, uh, yeah, I've got all kinds of good stuff at PT Surplus, which, by the way, I cannot re recommend highly enough if you're ever in the... Um, Kingston, uh, New York area, all kinds of cool stuff, because I mean, like, I got these for, you know, less than an order of magnitude, or more than an order of magnitude lower than their, um, typical MSRPs nowadays, like, I think these guys are 
200 bucks and change, I think. Even little dinky, you know, 30 volt amper ones, which is the smallest I've seen. And also that one, which I got for next to nothing, but I need to mount it, mount it in the proper box, and of course get a cap for it. But you know, these are designed for mounting on a back plane or on the side of an enclosure, and then just drill and grommet holes corresponding with the wiring limbs. But yeah. Eh, so many products, and of course, yes, I've got, you know, cardboard spaces because this is what I came up with, you know, years ago. When I first got these. But also, these don't really operate hot enough for the cardboard to be a problem. I mean, if they do get that hot, I mean, bad things are going to happen because, of course, combustible fluid and blah, blah, blah. 158 degrees Fahrenheit, and because my brain doesn't work in metric. And of course, you know, 10,000 amperes, fault current, because these are often used for um, or fault current rated without blowing up and stuff. Because these are often used for things like um, power factor correction, um, split phase motors, or some split phase motors, some rely on just um, varying, indu varying inductances between two sets of windings to generate the rotating magnetic field. Um, but these are for, you know, ca capacitor split phase motors and also some ballast circuits for high-intensity discharge lamps. Here's them in series with the lamp as part of the um, ballasting circuit. But yeah, and then of course that blob of solder, that's just to cover over the fill hole for where they fill it with the, um, fill it with its um, oil. So yeah. I had to summarize an almost 12 minute video. If you ever need replacement things, try DigiKey. Eh, rambles. Here's a bit of another video on this um, transformer. The, um, for a transformer. The actual uh, potential across the cap is, according to uh, that multimeter, it's, um, you know, harbor freight decent, you know, what do you expect for 20 bucks. But um, it's far better than those crappy little ones that they give you for free. Uh, that one said it was about 630. 30 or 600, no, 660 volts. According to my scope, it's um, 638 volts RMS, uh, 1560 volts peak to peak. Um, of course, I'm doing this with the 100X probe for you know safety, and I'm also running this through another isolation transformer, and I'm not touching it, as you can tell. But uh, that's the waveform across it, and it's a um, bit on the jointy side, but um, you know, kind of flat top. But I think, I, I'd imagine that's probably the. Um, this is the first time I've ever done this, so I'd imagine that's an artifact of, you know, just how the ferro-resin transformer works. And this is the mains output, uh, 120.5 volts, 332 volts peak to peak, which looks fairly normal. That's just because I was doing that on multiple channels last time I used the scope. And, um, by the way, I am running this through a 100x probe, just, you know, for safety reasons. There's about, you know, 170, 170 volts peak to peak, or 165, I think, more like, across those two terminals, so, you know, don't touch. So it isn't quite the 340 that you'd expect if this were a mathematically pure sinusoid, but it's, it's reasonably close. There is a bit of, you know, jagginess and flat topping, which, maybe if I adjust the trigger level. Open such a bloody shiny screen, it's... Yeah, maybe change the brightness a bit. It also, it's got a, a really flaky brightness adjustment taunt. So, what I'm, one of the things I'm going to do to this, you know, when the warranty expires, which considering they got it almost a year ago, probably has by now, I'm going to put in, you know, the a small tin turn pot in place of the really crappy one that, that it's got in stock. But, you know, it's a $300 clone of a... Um, it's basically very much like a, tr a Tektronix TDS 200 series scope, except you know these buttons are in, some of these buttons are in color and it has a color screen instead of black and white. Other than that, it's you know it's, it's a Tektronix clone, so you know. But then it's also substantially cheaper than Tektronix. And, you know, some kind of a bit of a pain in the nuts. But yeah, this is going to get replaced with, or, well, it's my main scope, but it's going to be replaced with a, um, a, a, a Rigol, um, DS4014. 
but uh, you know that's you know eight times what this was but you're getting a lot more than eight times the scope you know because four channels 140 million points of sample memory intensity grading all kinds of cool stuff and you know see Connor Wolf's video on it for it is a really flaky pot come on you I'm going to check to see if the warranty is up on this, because if it is, I'm going to replace that pot. I was getting, you know, you know, you know smallest 10-turn pot or, you know, multi-turn pot that I can get. Actually, maybe not even that, just, you know, you know, something that doesn't suck, because that's a really crappy, you know, PCB substrate pot. You know, you know cheap. As absolutely nasty as you can get, but you know, what do you expect for 300 bucks for you know 60 megacycle bandwidth? By the way, for those of you who ask, that's what the scope is, which is actually discontinued now. But you can get the um PDS um 5022S for which is a 25 megacycle one, which is also, I think, a fairly decent scope for about you know 200 bucks and change on Amazon now. This one they seem to have discontinued shortly after I got it, but I largely just but there wasn't that much of a price difference at the time I got it, and also, you know, the 60 megacycle bandwidth, which kind of me on this, but, you know, what do you expect for a $300 Chinese scope? But for what it is, it's, it's decent. I mean, like, yeah. And, of course, also safety. This is a, an isolated output uh, transformer. Because, um, you know, it, it is, ferroids and transformers argue effectively, you know, isolation transformers. And I'm also running it through a secondary isolation transformer just um, to be on the paranoid side. Because, you know, those BNCs would be floating, at, you know, that. And there's also, you know, 630 ad volts across that. And, yeah. So, which is, the problem is, like, if I can find, because I can tell that, because they do make... 100, uh, 1 kilovolt uh, AC caps, which I'll, if I can get one that'll fit, I'll replace it with it just because, you know, 660 volts is the maximum, you know, it's, it's kind of like an AMR, absolute maximum rating, but I have no idea why to do that, and, um, yeah, and, um, by the way, so that battery is just there, um, so yeah, random stuff.